Hello everyone. I really welcome you all wholeheartedly to AWS Women in Tech Days organized by AWS User Group India. And I'm really excited to talk about transformational DevOps with AWS native uh, tools. So before we begin today, a few announcements. There is an option for you to enter your questions whatever you have about today's session or especially about my talk. And I'm glad to answer about your questions at the end of the session. So please write down your questions and post it. And we're gonna have a poll. So your suggestions are always valuable for me to work upon my presentation skills and get it better for future sessions. So go ahead and uh, Add your comments as part of the poll and the next important thing you will have quiz at end of the session so watch out for the session stay up to date and answer at the end of the session so that you will win a chance to get a goodie okay so now we are set to get in okay a quick introduction about me i'm bhuvaneshwari subramani you can call me bhuvana for short I work for Infor as Director of Engineering Operations. And uh, I've been in the IT industry for past two decades. And I started my journey amidst all this Y2K problem, right? So the journey is going on. And I'm also proud to say that I'm a community hero from India and a co-organizer of AWS User Group Bengaluru. At present, I work on cloud computing, DevOps, and performance QA. Over and about the work I do, I'm really passionate about training and technical writing. You may find my blogs here, installjournal.blogspot.com. Let's get started for today. So here's going to be your key takeaways. We'll go through DevOps overview, and we will see how the DevOps and the cloud native tools on AWS are available to help us. And we're going to walk through simple, or rather a sample pipeline. And what is the value addition when we implement DevOps pipeline as part of our development process? Okay. First and foremost, it's about DevOps overview. In the evolution of DevOps, first, it was waterfall model. So in the waterfall model, it's a history though now, like, uh, it takes a while for us to get the finished product out of waterfall model. The reason being each step here should be completed before we move on to the next. So we should completely code before we move on for testing. We should finish the testing overall, then we will go ahead for the deployment. By the time we finish all the phases and go, probably the feature that we are trying to implement might be not relevant to the market as well, right? So then came Agile methodology. So with Agile methodology, the intention was to take the finished product as quickly as possible to the market. So in an effort to that, development and testing goes hand in hand. Okay, so agility with Agile development methodology, it has brought an agility to the development process, but somehow the operations have definitely taken a sideline. Okay. So that was not prioritized for operations. So to bridge the gap or to fix all these things, DevOps process came into existence. So with this, Dev and Ops team are not working in silos any longer. They should start working hand in hand to deliver what we developed as a product. So when did this DevOps begin in first place, right? That's relatively young compared to all of the practices that we taught. The basic ideation began in 2008, but it started to spread widely only in 2009 after the DevOps days was held in Belgium. So from now on, the Dev and Ops team are no longer working in silos. They're going to work hand in hand. Let's see how. So what is DevOps? 
DevOps is not a tool. It is a philosophy and practice focused on agility, collaboration, and automation within IT and development team processes. So the ultimate goal as part of agile, I mean, DevOps process is to shorten the software development life cycle and to take the finished product faster to the market to reach your end users or the customers. Here is the DevOps life cycle. How Dev and Ops work collaboratively is depicted very well as part of this DevOps life cycle. Right from your initial planning, you're gonna code, build, test, and release the packages periodically. The least product gets deployed on the respective environment. And you're going to operate and monitor. It's a continuous process which evolves and we use wide variety of tools in each of these stages to meet our goals. So with this little introduction or overview on DevOps, let's get into how the DevOps on AWS looks like. What are the tools available to help us? So how to implement DevOps basically? So we are talking about enabling your cross-functional teams to embrace the cultural change. How do you achieve that? So to implement this, your organization first needs to change its culture and mindsets to primarily focus on collaboration at a cross-functional level. So without the innate desire and the motivation to foster a collaboration, between development and operations, all the tools and automation will go completely useless. So the teams must strive to communicate regularly through whichever medium. It could be face-to-face -face communication. Of course, it's not possible during this COVID situation, but uh, still a lot of online meetings, email communications, and the tools like Slack, it plays a major role in keeping the communication up to date. So in addition, the members of our DevOps team, they might not stand outside and see, okay, drawing a line, this is my task and this is my task. No, it's no longer. So the DevOps team must take full ownership of the service and must be willing to go above and beyond their stated roles. And the next one, how to implement DevOps practices in software development. So there are a number of practices which help organization automate and streamline their development with most accomplished being with proper tooling. But the fundamental practice that you need in DevOps is to perform incremental updates very frequently and continuously. So this helps the teams to fix bugs quicker since they can identify them from the latest deployment, which caused the error. So now we saw how to implement DevOps. So as part of uh, DevOps on AWS, what are the benefits that we are going to get? Speed, rapid delivery, reliability, the scale, improved collaboration and security. How each one of this is going to help us? So when you say speed, So you will have to move at a very high velocity so that you can innovate faster, adapt to the changes, and reach the markets quickly, efficiently, achieving the business results. So the DevOps models enables your developers and operations team to achieve these results. Next one is rapid delivery. Increase the frequency and pace of releases so that you can innovate and improve your product faster. With the reliability, you're going to ensure the quality of application updates and infrastructure changes. So you can reliably deliver at more rapid pace while maintaining a positive experience for the end users through processes like uh, continuous integration, continuous delivery, we're going to see what is continuous integration and continuous delivery in a while. 
but I wanted to touch upon and say these are the best practices which is going to help us. And when we talk about scale, how would you operate and manage your infrastructure and development process at scale? So we'll have to automate and the consistency in your automation is going to help manage complex and changing systems efficiently with reduced risk. So here example, I would say infrastructure as a code will help you manage your development, testing, and all the production environments in a more repeatable and efficient manner. So improved collaboration. So when you come and talk about improved collaboration, the intention is to build more effective teams and a DevOps cultural model, which emphasizes values such as ownership, accountability. Here, developers and operations team collaborate closely, share many responsibilities, and combine their workflows. This completely reduces the inefficiencies and save a lot of time. Reduce, uh, example, like it reduces handover periods between developers and operations, and you can focus more on what you want to achieve. And definitely not without security, right? Though moving ahead quickly, and agility is a prime focus here. We are also going to retain control and preserving the compliance. So you can adapt the DevOps model without sacrificing security by using automated compliance policies, fine grained controls, and configuration management techniques. So now, when we talk about DevOps on AWS, AWS provides a set of flexible service designed to enable companies to adapt these philosophies more rapidly and reliably to build and deliver products using DevOps and DevOps practices. So here, these services provided by AWS, AWS cloud native tools that we have, using them, it simplifies the provisioning and managing infrastructure deploying the application code, automating software release process, and of course, monitoring your application infrastructure performance. So those are going to be the value add when we start adapting the cloud native DevOps that we have. Okay. So what are these DevOps practices? Some jargons, let's demystify them as part of this slide. First one, continuous integration, continuous delivery, microservices, infrastructure as a code, monitoring and logging, and most importantly, communication and collaboration. So when we talk about continuous integration, this is software development practices where developers regularly made, I mean, merge their code changes into a central repository, after which an automated build and test are run. So the important goal here is continuous integration is to find and address the bugs quickly, improve the software product quality, and reduce the time it takes to validate. The next one is continuous delivery. It's again a software development practice where the code changes are automatically built, tested, and prepared for release to production. So when continuous delivery is implemented properly, developers will always have a deployment ready build artifact that has already passed through a standardized test process with respect to validated by automated test suites. Next is microservices. The microservices architecture is a design approach to build single application as a set of small services. Here, each services runs its own process and communicate with other services through a well-defined interface. And the next one is infrastructure as a code. Well, configuration and policies can also be codified. So with this infrastructure as a code practice, infrastructure is provisioned and managed using code and a software development techniques such as version controlling, continuous integration, all that are applied to infrastructure creation scripts as well. 
when we talk about monitoring and logging the organization monitor the metrics and logs to see how the application behaves how the infrastructure performance impacts the experience of the product end user usage so by capturing all these metrics and when we are analyzing these data and logs generated by the application as well as infrastructure the organization can understand how the changes and updates impacts the user and what are the precautionary measures they have to take to ensure things reaches the end user properly and the last definitely not the least a very important one is communication and collaboration our intention is always to have increased communication and collaboration in an organization which is a key cultural aspect of devops so the devops tooling and automation of software delivery process here it establishes a collaboration by physically bringing together the workflows and the responsibilities of development and operations teams are handshaked here so next one is as part of the devops life cycle we saw what are the aws services that we have that's going to help us achieve our devops practices here so in this life cycle when we start when we wanted to code we have aws code commit as a source control repository the code that we develop locally and when we wanted to collaborate across developers who are geographically distributed and you have hundreds of developers we have aws code commit as a place which is similar to git i would say if you know git already you know 90% of code commit so be happy about it and cloud9 is the integrated ide which you can use it for your development purpose after that you have aws code bin for build which can compile your source code generate the artifact and the third party tools that can be integrated with the pipeline for testing and we have cloudwatch for monitoring of course aws code pipeline is a very important tool which will help you to achieve a seamless pipeline where both continuous integration and continuous deployment are achieved and code deploy can help you install your applications either onto aws cloud ec2 instances or onto your on premise instances if you have no time to decide how many instances you need create ec2 instances maintain it all that go ahead directly start using the aws managed services elastic beanstalk which will help you to deploy on aws cloud without having to manage all those resources but you will have root access to the device or the machines that you are creating as part of this service and the next important thing is to achieve infrastructure as a code aws cloud formation template is a service available with aws cloud you can pretty much take advantage of that and the latest in development uh, cloud development kit it's going to help you even further when you are focusing on infrastructure as a code so these are the some of the services i would love to talk more about uh, many of the services are there in place so for uh, today's session we'll move on with these services and see how these things can be used okay how this aws is helping in implementing our devops practices in our transformational devops so in a constant pursuit to bridge the gap between dev and ops with the aws services you can definitely offload the undifferentiated heavy lifting from your shoulders like taking care of the systems constantly applying patches to the systems be it an operating system or the application that you are using with all these offloaded to aws you are going to foster innovation and you can automate things as much as possible even your infrastructure is turning into a code with the help of aws cloud formation template and all this definitely with increased security posture that's what the transformational devops is going to bring in through aws cloud native tools 
That apart, we also have certain DevOps tools available in AWS Marketplace if you wanted a holistic solution. Earlier, when we were using either um, HP Load Runner or now Microsoft MicroFocus Load Runner, so we set up a system, set up the Load Runner, and start using it. When you wanted to move to cloud, the solution is available in AWS Marketplace. Go ahead, include that as part of the solution, start building it. Similar solutions, what we have for our DevOps are Chef, Dynatrace, Moonsoft, Harness Pro, Tricentis, and much more you would find. These things are getting added day by day. That just watch out. So with this introduction about uh, cloud native tools, how it can help in DevOps, I want to show you a simple pipeline, what we can implement as part of this DevOps. So when we say a software release, whatever the product that we are developing, if you're working on an online portal where you wanted to sell products or any application that you're developing, the ultimate goal is to take that product that is being developed to the market quickly and sooner, right? As part of this process, the four important stages are very important. First is source, then build, deploy to a staging environment, get it tested, and later go live to the production environment. So when you talk about source, managing the source code is very important. When you're developing across geographies, hundreds of developers are collaborating on a single piece of code. Could be a same file or a bunch of files in a project. Having a common system is mandatory, right? We wanted to get the code committed to the central system, have the peer review done before we take it forward for the deployment. So you wanted to version control the changes, all this, you need a centralized source control system. Fine. The next stage, we are going to take this code from the central repository. I'm not going to take it from a developer's machine or somewhere. I'm going to pull it from the central repository, compile the code, create the artifact, store it in a central location, an artifact repository, and then later we'll use it for deployment. While the build is happening, we can run a whole bunch of unit tests or the static code validation. All these checks can be run parallelly while your compilation is running. If it's going to be microservices, if it's a container image, your output will be a container image which you can generate and put it in the container registry. So now this is going to help build our package. So the next one is we wanted to deploy to staging environment and have it tested. So using when you deploy to the staging environment, you can integrate a whole suite of test automation which are already implemented, could be integration test, user interface test, a load test with your uh, JMeter or load runner which you already have, or penetration test from the security standpoint. So all these tests can be integrated while you deploy the software package to the staging environment. So the next one, once the validation is done, probably with an approval gate, you would take it to the production environment deployment. So in this stage, where we, what happens from source to build to deploy to the staging environment and the continuous testing? This forms the continuous integration as part of a software delivery process. And when we wanted to deploy to production, the whole process that is involved is continuous delivery. So to achieve this continuous integration and continuous delivery, how exactly I can map closure with the AWS developer tools that we have? We would use AWS code commit for source control management, code build for compiling your source code, generating the artifact, and a code deploy is going to help deploy to the staging environment. And you can use the third-party tools to run the test suites. Later, deploy it to the production environment using, again, AWS code deploy. So the entire orchestration, the flow, is done or completely regulated through AWS code pipeline. 
So AWS Code Pipeline is a continuous integration and continuous delivery tool from AWS Cloud. So how these tools can fit into a pipeline? Let's assume a use case. You have a bunch of developers working on a Java application that is stored in AWS Code Commit. Now you wanted to pull that code, compile, generate an artifact, and you wanted to store it in S3 bucket. So now you wanted to deploy to a e EC2 instance. So when you're trying to deploy to an EC2 instance, you have to make sure AWS code deploy agent is running. Then only AWS code deploy can talk to the agent, deploy the artifact on that agent. So as part of the deployment, what exactly happens in that EC2 instance? It's a Java web application. And I intend to use Tomcat as a service. So the script that I'm using is part of appspec.yaml file, which drives the deployment for the code deploy. So in this script, we would stop the Tomcat service, or if it is not installed, we're going to install the Tomcat service. Now, deploy web application through the instructions from appspec.yaml. And you're going to start the Tomcat service. So done. This is what we're going to implement. So how would our network diagram look like? What could be the implementation? Here I'm going with the assumption that my EC2 instance is already provisioned in the AWS cloud within a virtual private network, and it's up and running. I am also ensuring that code deploy agent is installed on this EC2 instance for my applications to work properly. So this is our pipeline. I have a bunch of developers. They are geographically distributed, developing on the application, committing it into source control repository. As part of my pipeline, I'm going to pull the source code from code commit. And when you pull this code from code commit, this is going to pay, put the source code intermediately in an S3 bucket. That S3 bucket is internally handled by AWS itself. You don't have to do anything extra for it. So that source code will be placed as a zip file in this temporary S3 bucket. Later, when it moves to the next stage, AWS code build will have the pointer to that artifact which is stored, that is a bunch of code, it's a zip file. So this code build is going to pull that artifact, the temporary zip file, which is placed. It's going to use that source code, compile it, generate an artifact for deployment and place it in an S3 bucket. So the S3 bucket will hold your artifact. It can, it is, S3 bucket is basically a storage designed for the internet. It can help store your artifact or if for some reason you're storing the source code in S3 bucket, you can store it. So you can use S3 bucket for pretty much anything that you want to store. You want to put your profile photo, you can do it. If you wanted to self-host a static website there with only this service, you can do the static website hosting. So this serves the pretty much lot of purpose. So now in this session, we are going to use S3 only for storing the artifact. So in this code build, an artifact is generated, stored in S3 bucket. Parallelly, we can run unit test on top of the code, the original source code itself that can run parallelly and notify. So now we'll move on to the next stage, third stage here, where the artifact which is stored in this S3 bucket will be pulled and deployed to the EC2 instance. So this is our three stage process. First is source, second is build, and third stage is deploy. So in these three stages, the code pipeline loses all these things together and helps transition from one stage to another and pass the intermediate uh, input from one stage to other. That's how the whole pipeline works. So now I have the source where code build is code commit is giving the source code. So source code is pulled from the code commit. Next code build, we using that source code, compiling, generating the artifact, putting it in S3. After that, as part of deployment, we are pulling the artifact from S3, 
and deploying to the EC2 instance. Perfect. So now the application is available to the end user through the internet. This is the application. Perfect. So now, how does the different stages looks like when we implement it? Right? So you will have three stages here. First stage, you will also see the revision from where the source code is pulled. When the revision is pulled, what happens? Okay, the compilation has succeeded. After the compilation is done, the artifact is generated. I'm going to deploy it to the staging environment. So this is how the pipeline output will look like if it has succeeded. So now I've deployed to staging environment. I wanted to take it to production. So I, I cannot just like that move to production. Probably as some kind of gate might be required wherein a release manager or someone comes and approves the release and gives a green signal. So with that, you can integrate two more stages to the pipeline. So you will have a manual approval and you will have a production deploy. Once the approval is done, see how this manual approval is works. If you have integrated with this, the release manager need not even have access to the whole AWS console interface or whatever. An email will be notified to the release manager. All that he or she has to do is go to that email click the URL and say accept or reject. The moment he accepts, the other stages in the pipeline continue seamlessly. That's how the manual approval and the reminding of the deploy works. So as of now, we are all set and the production deploys in progress. Good. Okay, so a quick look at pricing. So there are too many things that we are talking. I have created only an AWS free tier account or I have created a free tier account sometime back for learning purpose. It's more than a year, but I still wanted to set up a pipeline for one of my application. I wanted to use all these tools. How much would it cost? Will it be a big hole in my pocket? Certainly no. So let's have a quick look at the pricing. So when you use AWS uh, code commit, anyone with an AWS account can get started with code commit for free. Either you're on the free tier or even later, your account gets five active users per account free within the limits. And after which you pay $1 per additional active users per month. For you to play around, it's one user, it's no, not at all a problem, go ahead. And for code build, you're only paying by the number of build minutes for the compute resources. For example, your build is going to take 20 minutes. Worst case, you will be charged only for that build minutes okay but when you're trying and playing around with an application it hardly take one or two minutes for the compilation and it wouldn't cost you at all aws code deploy there is no additional charge for code deploy to ec2 instance but if you're trying to deploy to an on-premise instance it's going to cost so the aws code pipeline and a pipe in a month so, and that too, it's only $1 for an active pipeline. If you're just learning and deleting it within 15, 20 days, it's not going to cost you. It's a very interesting thing for you to learn and then decide whether it's worth using it or not, honestly, but nothing should stop you from learning and playing around with these tools. Go get started today. So, okay. So what is the value addition this is going to bring in? right when we implement devops and when we claim that we have used certain new tools change the process and practices how this is going to help so the value addition that devops bring in is shorter development cycle reduced deployment failures and rollback and time to reach the market right so here when we're talking about reduced deployment failure is how quickly we can resolve the issues with beforehand looking at the issues all that now with improved communication and collaboration across cross-functional teams things will go hand in hand very easily automate things whenever possible 
speed the development process okay so what are the metrics that we can gauge when we are using devops so we are going to achieve rapid delivery with increased efficiency so with increased feature releases and with reduced time to market it's going to be really a seamless delivery for us so the quicker feedback to teams and the stakeholders it will be easier for them to implement and then fix the issues and the tickets are incidents the more number of tickets are incidents you get in your pre production environment you will foresee less number of issues in future so it's good to have more issues when we are testing right and how can we achieve high availability elasticity and scalable infrastructure so with these tools could be aws code commit aws uh, code deploy pipeline all of these things are managed services meaning you don't have to create the service and you don't have to ensure that okay i'll put two servers here and two servers here ensure high availability for my build process when this goes down that will be taken care all that is not required not at all required the reason is these are managed services and aws ensures high availability elasticity and provides highly scalable infrastructure so that's about the metrics to gauge once you roll out devops using this services so that's all i had for today and may your devops journey begins from now on here is my contact details please feel free to reach out either on linkedin and twitter definitely will look forward to contact with each one of you and exchange ideas and learn together and grow together thank you so much and most importantly please go ahead and take the poll and share your feedback so that we can improve on our presentation and also participate in the contest and i look forward you will win it okay Thank you so much.